Here now, Nicole Neely. She is the president of Parents Defending Education. Nicole, good to see you. What do you make of this development in Florida? I think that it's one, there are about a dozen states that have either banned the teaching of critical race theory or moving to do so. Sure. You know what? Critical race theory is state sponsored discrimination. And that's what I think a lot of it's, you know, people who are defending it are trying to distract by saying, well, you're not allowing us to teach history. That's not what the state of Florida wants to do. And it's not what these other states want to do. It, what these states want to prevent by banning critical race theory is they want to prevent students being pitted against each other, students being defined by their immutable characteristics. That is what they want to ban. Certainly, American history can and should be taught better and more comprehensively, but we don't want children being made to feel bad about who they are because of what other people have done in the past. Nicole, this has been going on for some time, has it not? And it seems like it was the the awakening of parents in the last year, year and a half during the pandemic shutdown, was it not? Where the parents really began to see what was going on in the classrooms that they weren't really aware of. Is that a, f a fair assessment? I think absolutely. Um, if we can say that there was a silver lining to the pandemic, it's that suddenly classrooms were in families' living rooms. And so parents had a window into what their children were being learned, were being taught, um, what their assignments were, and people were appalled, rightfully so. Um, and so if it weren't for that, I think a lot of parents still wouldn't know what's going on because many of this, many of these lessons, uh, the foundation has been laid years and years in advance. Groups like the Southern Poverty Law Center have, they claim that they have 500,000 educators within their network. That's not something that's sprung up within the past year. So again, this is people have woken up and it has been going on for a long time. Yeah, as Jason Riley, who writes for the Wall Street Journal, said that critical race theory is, is the, derives from Marxism, and it kind of gained uh, some popularity or currency in the 1970s. But it's the same thing. He said it's like a zero-sum game rather than it being capitalist versus workers. It's uh, whites versus blacks. And it's he. this is a quote from Jason. The problems of blacks are the fault of whites and the responsibility of whites to solve. But this goes further. There's a lawsuit that uh, um, filed in Loudoun County, Virginia, about it was the Student e uh, Equity Ambassador Network, or these affinity groups that say white students are essentially banned from joining. Right. I mean, these are policies in 2021 that would make George Wallace proud. We are dividing students and making, you know, putting them on privilege walks and, you know, above and below each other based on perceived groups of oppressor and oppressed. That is not how we form a more perfect union. That has no place in American education. And the same way that we will defeat these ideas is the same way that we, de we desegregated water fountains in the 1960s. This is unacceptable and it is unconstitutional. Nicole, great to see you. Thank you so much. Please come back. Nicole Neely. Thank you.